for black folks, the relationship to space has, has been very difficult in Appalachia. When I study black Knoxville, one of the things that comes up very frequently is just that black people are either out of place or have lost place, right? They, they've lost schools and churches, they've lost uh, clubs, they've lost KFCs on Magnolia, you know what I mean? Like people constantly talk, they've lost neighborhoods to urban renewal, they've lost housing projects to Hope Six. There's this constant narrative of loss of place. And so it's important for black folks to claim space in this region and claim this region. Generally, black history and narratives in the United States have not been valued and held to the same value as uh, white history right. in the country. And so I think because of that, there, there has been a, a great amount of loss. This work's really important because it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Right. Like we're creating stuff from scratch in a lot of ways. The narratives and the stories and the materials are there, right. but they've never been, they've not been considered. It become really apparent like there was all this stuff that people had in their basements and they would have everybody's business in tubs in their, in their basement, in their, the garage. And it, after seeing that, you begin to like recognize the need. There's kind of this analogy that I like to use. There's like these two mountains and one mountain is the official narrative. It's the courthouse records. It's even in academia, it's the official record. And this other mountain you have is the vernacular history, it's the oral history. And in the middle, like here in Appalachia, that's, that's where the holler's at, where mm -hmm. the two mountains meet. And that's also where you find in, in topography, that's where you find the most biodiversity is in the holler. So by holding up the vernacular history is, is just as valuable as the official narrative, that's where we're gonna find the most biodiversity in narrative and the most richness of stories that we can, can make available and carve out that space. And I think, I think that for people who are native to the region, for black people who are native to the region, like they know that they belong here, but they still have a complicated relationship with the region and with calling themselves Appalachian even, right? Black Appalachians have a difficult time um, claiming that identity. And for, for many of them, it's something that they are sort of coming into right now or coming into in their adulthood or coming into after some struggle, right? And, they, and, and some of them are, um, open to dealing with that struggle, right? And figuring out what does it mean to be black and Appalachian. And I think that um, like we are seeing the term Afrolachian and some people feel like, okay, that's, that's me, that, that's for me. I can claim Appalachian-ness. And so to me, that's, that's really important. I think the idea of being Appalachian really came slowly to me, but I always knew that I was like, a, I was country. Really, it, it feels like I have been kind of cutting my teeth on this work for most of my adult life. Like I work to try to research and track back my own family's history, which is hard through slavery in the region. And I got really, I've got really good at it. And I think that my, like that boot camp of my family's mm -hmm. research or of learning how to research my own family's history prepared me for it, I think. And so we started this work in 2012. Chris Smith had the idea to do a documentary on Swift Memorial Institute, which used to be a historically black college in Rogersville, Tennessee, in Hawkins County. We did that uh, documentary. And then afterwards, Chris was like, we should keep doing this. And so they are media guys and I'm a researcher. The work that they're doing is really important for researchers because when I came to Knoxville, I immediately noticed that something was different about this space that I hadn't experienced anywhere else in the country and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. And I tried to learn about black Knoxville and I couldn't find anything. The work that William and Chris and everyone else are doing documenting these histories, like I needed that when I started. And even now that I'm sort of finished with my dissertation and kind of figuring out where I want to go in the future, I cannot leave academia until I've published on this region, until I've published on Black Knoxville. But one thing that I have experienced since we've been working on the podcast and all the field work that we've done is just the, the overwhelming welcomeness, welcomingness of people in the region. Like, I feel like when they see us, when we talk with them, we become family, right? Like they treat us very well. 
not that I expected any, something else, but it was just, it just feels good. Like, it just feels like, hey, we're all kind of in this thing together. I don't know, like even the lady that we met the other day that um, we were out looking at a, a church um, in Strawberry Plains area and she like um, saw us across the street and we went up to talk with her and she was so, she was so happy to see us and she's like, y'all come back, come back to the cookout. There's a lot of cookouts. Um, <laughs> but you know, I just felt, I just like that. I just like that feeling um, of connectedness and just the overwhelming warmth that we're greeted with. And so it's just important, again, like the work that we're doing with the Black and Appalachia initiative is just so, so important because I think it's important to reimagine Appalachia, right? We've had one narrative for a long time and it, and, and honestly, it sort of like cheats the region of all of its complexities, right? All of um, the nuances, like like we don't have to be just one thing. And and I think part of the, the, the mission of Black in Appalachia is to really pull from some of the stuff that, that, that we've been collecting, some of the stories that we've been collecting along the way, some of the data that we've been looking at and really like make connections to present day life in Appalachia um, and really create a space, a virtual and sometimes a physical space for black people in this region that, that, that affirms for them that like you belong here, but also to let everybody else know that they belong here as well.